This broadcast is sponsored by TimeCamp, a company providing time tracking software for shared service centers and IT firms. Find out how much time your company spends on particular projects, clients, and business processes. Use the discount code BSS to get 20% off the app's annual subscription. This podcast is supported by patrons. You can find the full list of them in the description of this episode. Hello, hello, good morning, my listeners of uh, Good Morning BSS World Podcast. This is Victor Doctor, and today we have another episode of the podcast when I do have a guest from Ukraine. I am connecting today with Kiev, uh, where my special guest is, representing not one, not two, but much, much uh, bigger number of institutions. And you will find out during our talk what kind of institutions those are. But in the very beginning, let's welcome our guest. And this is Natalia. Hi, Natalia. How are you? Oh, hi, Victor. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you and thank you for this invitation. I'm glad to be here. So tell us a little bit about uh, yourself. I already mentioned that you are representing more than one institution. So where are you? First of all, uh, I'm a founder of EdTech startup, GEOS, Global Innovative Online School. It's an inter interactive platform for learning math and critical thinking development for school children and teachers. And my other role, uh, I'm a co-founder of NGO Digital Future of Education. And also I'm an active member of uh, at Tech Committee in uh, um, IT Ukraine Association, and now we're launching at Tech Ukraine Association. Uh, as you can see, all my roles are connected with education, and my team and me passionate about changing and challenging all school educational system and bring affordable, interactive, uh, modern learning globally. I can only imagine that uh, education, first of all, education is very, very important for children and for the adults as well. Uh, having some kind of a connection with IT Ukraine Association, I do suppose that, that this education is also some kind of mathematics or technical oriented, isn't it? Yes, of course. Okay. So, uh, usually when we do talk with uh, Ukrainian companies, with uh, guests from Ukraine, we are starting about the update from the Ukrainian IT ecosystem, about the updates from the market. So, if we could also do that within today's uh, conversation. Can you give us some kind of an update? What is happening nowadays in IT world in Ukraine? Uh, yes, thank you for this question. And... Uh... I want to tell you some words uh, what happened uh, during last month. Uh, um, first of all, uh, EU, uh, European Union and Ukrainian cyber dialogue held in Brussels, Belgium. And uh, we use uh, European Union cyber security practices and uh, additional uh, trainings for our civilians and military entities. Uh, the second event uh, with uh, gl our global partners assistant, uh, our Ukrainian mobile uh, operators now can be staying in touch even without electricity. Unfortunately, you know about all this damage of our power system and uh, sometimes we are without electricity and uh, now we will be in touch uh, in our mobile um, uh, and uh, next one, uh, we move uh, towards the uh, digitalization and our Ukrainian government presented a uh, digital reporting platform for businesses uh, to give uh, feedback for public services. Uh, it's very useful for us as a business uh, because uh, we want uh, to improve our public services and this is the way. And uh, uh, also Army Plus uh, platform uh, from uh, Ministry of Defense uh, help us, uh, not us, but our armed forces to reduce bureaucracy. I like all this digitalization and uh, mm, this transformation uh, because I'm, uh, I'm a 
fanat maybe of digitalization and improving uh, uh, the life of people through this uh, useful digital services. Yeah, it, it looks like it was a really busy month. Yeah, even in summer, uh, it's not a vacation for us. <laughs> Okay, Natalia, uh, thank you very much for this update. And uh, yeah, it looks like the summer wasn't, an, uh, um, uh, let's say, a leisure time, rather a busy time when it comes to the either events or some um, uh, initiatives which were already taken. I have made some notes in here and it looks like this is not only Ukraine-EU uh, cyber relation, but also with this um, defense ministry and so on and so on. So uh, the Ukrainian IT industry has a lot to do probably within the, in the last weeks. Yeah, of course. And uh, uh, the last but not the least, uh, we are in the negotiation uh, with our Ministry of Education, uh, my main uh, direction, uh, about, uh, uh, about state and business partnership, uh, because we want to digitalize our educational system as well. So let's stay in this subject now for a while. Uh, Geos, this is one of the projects where you are in, involved. Tell us a little bit more about this. What is it? What stands behind this? Uh, it's a very interesting story. The story started actually from my own pain. I am a mother of two sons and I wanted to them a high quality education and self-realization, but I can't find uh, uh, something more and, and engaging in our educational system. That's why uh, ten, uh, almost 10 years ago, I founded several private schools in Ukraine, offline private schools in Kyiv and Lviv. But the main issue of the private schools is that they're hard to scale. Uh, but there are more than 1.5 billion of school children in the world, and all of them need to study. And uh, we know that our kids were born in the digital age. They uh, can't focus their attention for more than one minute in a row. They hate long lectures with talking heads and outdated materials. That's why we created this math platform uh, with animated video lectures, gamification, scoring system, and awards. Uh, we want to be more interesting than TikTok under the desk. Uh, that's why we created this TikTok style lessons with AI daily challenges and uh, gamification. And uh, who is the audience? Is it for the primary school, elementary school, or any type of age? Uh, this is for um, uh, from fifth graders till the end of the school, secondary and high school, uh, not primary. Uh, but we plan to add primary school as well in the nearest future. And from the very beginning, we create this platform like bilingual with different languages. And now uh, even our Ukrainian students uh, could uh, learn math in Ukraine and in English, for example. And now we are scaling our project to the international market and have a lot of users from uh, different countries, from Eastern Europe. Uh, now we are scaling uh, to the United, uh, uh, to United States and United Kingdom. And uh, when this whole project uh, started, how old is it? Uh, we started, we launched in 2020 uh, and uh, in a month before uh, the COVID. It, it was a, a very, very <laughs> interesting period uh, uh, because uh, a huge way, uh, before this, nobody know what is in Ukraine, what is online education, why is this online education, we need uh, offline, we know our teachers and so on. And in one day, all Ukrainian schools were closed and a huge wave, uh, almost 80,000 Ukrainian students and teachers joined to our platform. It was like uh, uh, stressful for us because it was very in the very beginning, uh, but it was uh, a good time uh, to improve our product and to, um, to add a lot of uh, users to our platform. And we granted free, actually we granted free access to our platform from the beginning of COVID. And then in half a year, we start monetize it. 
And the same, uh, unfortunately, uh, we, 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 we did uh, at the beginning of Russian aggression in our country. We granted free access to all Ukrainians wherever they are. And uh, next wave of Ukrainians uh, joined to our platform because uh, some of them uh, were, were, were in the process of relocation. Some of them cannot be offline in school. And it was our help and our support to our Ukrainians. And so it's already four years old, uh, at least. Yeah, and uh, and there were at least two phases of the growth, probably of the interest of this platform. So one uh, because of the COVID, the second because of the Russian aggression. How many users do you have at the moment? Uh, right now we have more than 150,000 registered users and 140 schools because we propose our project not only for uh, end users, for students, but for schools. We created very useful digital tools for teachers, uh, how to analyze uh, the dynamic of uh, their students, how to improve their engagement. And we have a great experience with this and a lot of statistics. For example, um, last year we provided all Ukrainian competition like marathon uh, to all Ukrainians wherever they are during uh, one and a half months and uh, more than 22,000 uh, Ukrainians from all regions from Ukraine uh, joined to the platform and uh, from more than 30 countries. Unfortunately, our refugees and our uh, children now live in in different countries. One of them uh, was even from Madagascar. I don't know how, how it can be, but it, it, it was. Uh, and uh, they uh, have an had an, an opportunity to teach math. Uh, this uh, this um, competition uh, name was uh, uh, Play Math. And uh, playing by by learning, learning by playing, uh, and uh, they have additional motivation. Top ten uh, received uh, laptops, and top fifty received uh, another prizes. And we test them at the beginning of this competition and and the end. And what we saw, uh, it was a very good result for for us. Uh, 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 almost 30% from them uh, reach the best results and uh, pass through all topics, uh, not only three or f five topics uh, through this period, but the topics from all the educational year. And uh, uh, they improve their results, increase their academic success uh, average by 43% and uh, engagement more than 90%. It was very uh, meaningful for us uh, and valuable, and we know why we do this. This is impressive, absolutely impressive. And uh, let's come back to those language versions. So um, I believe you have it in Ukrainian and in English. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Are there uh, any other languages being considered to, to be added to this platform? Uh, we have a uh, uh, version in Russian because uh, we are working with Central Asia. Recently, we signed a contract with Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. And uh, we have a Russian, uh, uh, Russian language and English language for them. So you cover half of the world, to be honest, with those two languages. <laughs> Not yet, but we try to do this. <laughs> if you will add one day the Spanish one, then you will have the whole globe. It's a good idea. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Natalia, and uh, how big is your team within this uh, GIOS? How many people do stand behind that? Uh, actually, we are 11 brave people, uh, full-time work for this project and a lot of teams uh, like outsourcing teams. Uh, uh, brilliant teachers, for example, who create our content and who, who help uh, uh, our students uh, to learn math and uh, brilliant uh, 
animator studios uh, because we change this text into animation very short bright animation uh, which uh, engage children into interesting process of education nice that that sounds really nice small team but well organized and uh, with par external partners who have the proper skills to show what you want to show so good for you okay let's put a little bit full stop in here and let's move to your second area with which is digital future of um, education can you share more details about this uh, ngo uh, we created this NGO from uh, in 2021, before the war. Um, and uh, from the beginning of the war, we understood that a lot of Ukrainian refugees uh, um, have not an opportunity um, to uh, buy commercial products. Uh, they lost their, uh, lost their um, their homes, their families, some of them, and uh, we want to help them. And uh, and we created this NGO, and then we attract money from different donors or sponsors uh, to help our teachers and uh, students. Uh, by the way, we have very sincere uh, stories about our brave teachers who continue to teach our, uh, even under missiles attacks, even our, un, under destruction and so on. And uh, we wanted to support them. Uh, the, uh, how of the teachers from our hot uh, places in Ukraine, from uh, near the front line, and we wanted to help them. That's why we attracted uh, donors uh, to help our refugees and our teachers. And uh, how this project is developing now? It's not very easy to attract donors and money from different countries and from different projects. Uh, we try to apply uh, um, a dozen times and uh, um, and we have some success and uh, we continue to do it to do it all the time uh, to help our children and our teachers okay and uh, how to connect those two projects so the geos and the digital future of education with edtech ukraine uh, association is there any common link for this uh, a Tech Ukraine uh, Association is quite new organization now only in the process of official registration, uh, legal registration, and uh, we plan to focus on connection with uh, a European Ed Tech Alliance, uh, which uh, uh, um, there are more than twenty, not more, but exactly twenty nine countries. Uh, uh, in this uh, European EdTech Alliance, and we want to change the best practices. We want to create common projects. We want to create consortiums in EdTech sphere and to share all these practices uh, in Europe and in Ukraine. Uh, maybe let's uh, stay a little bit with this subject because for some of our listeners and viewers, this combination of two words, EdTech, tech may not be as transparent as it may be for you or, or me. So can we just uh, explain what EdTech stands for and uh, how, how, can be, how it can be understood? Uh, yes, of course. I'm sorry that I didn't tell it before. Uh, EdTech, uh, it's like uh, educational plus technological. Uh, we combine education with modern technologies to be more affordable and more accessible to all uh, school children and teachers and not only school children uh, for adults as well because we uh, we um, uh, we connected a lot of uh, technological and educational companies from different spheres from the early childhood to the adults and even veterans because now we have a special uh, direction with veterans how to switch them to another profession how to insert them into modern life after the war for example and we want to uh, unite all these uh, uh, players from this uh, technological and educational sphere it could be modern uh, digitalized schools for example it could be 
uh, not only educational institutions, but publishers with educational platform, uh, uh, additional educational platform, uh, any organizations with digital part and with uh, modernization of education with this passion like our uh, and uh, we we try to co combine to unite all these organizations and to integrate it I, I, they into european union and not only european union uh, but uh, to united kingdom to other countries and create something uh, modern and new for this topic so if you are now in this phase of creating this EdTech Ukraine Association, it means that you have already did some investigation of the Ukrainian market, how many of the players are over there. Do you have any range, any scale of how many companies are actually the EdTech companies in Ukraine? Uh, uh, not, not us, uh, but uh, there, there is some organization uh, where I am a part of uh, this group, uh, educational group, uh, the name of this organization, Teco System, uh, uh, and also um, IT Ukraine Association do this uh, investigation uh, and research as well. And uh, they uh, investigated that there are more than 100 companies, 100 companies in Ukraine, which combine educational and technological part and create something new in in the educational process and uh, but i suppose that there are more than maybe 200 uh, we will investigate it in the next part of our uh, our association the next step of our association and uh, maybe in the next podcast i will uh, give you a more uh, precise answer even 100 is quite a lot, to be honest, hearing that there are companies who are connecting education with the technology and doing some good things for developing certain skills within the, the targeted group. So this is absolutely already a big, big number. If you are mentioning that it might be even 200 plus, then wow, this is a quite big market. Uh, yes, of course, and this is a good direction how to modern how to uh, to do this modernization how to change this old school system old school textbooks and old school lectures to more engaging process uh, and quick and engaging and interesting process of learning we, we, we want uh, that people uh, learn with joy I can only imagine that maths is not the only one subject which is going to be covered by this edtech Yes, of course, uh, there are a lot of uh, um, language platforms, for example, maybe you, uh, you, you heard about uh, huge uh, Decacorns. Decacorns is a company uh, that, uh, um, uh, that uh, valuation of this company is more than 10 uh, billion dollars. And uh, there are several of them, uh, not decacorns, but unicorns, one billion dollars from Ukraine. For example, our Preply platform, almost a unicorn now, and uh, they are scaling their uh, language uh, learning platform during uh, more than 40 countries. Uh, and uh, they have a huge amount of uh, students on their platform and then continue to scale. Natalia, I am taking a look on, on the clock and it's already over 20 minutes when we are having this EduTech Wow, talk. <laughs> I thought only five minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it always uh, feels like that, that we just started and it's already 10, 20 minutes uh, gone. Is there anything uh, what we missed during this 20 minutes of conversation? What is important when it comes to this education and technology within um, uh, IT? Ukraine Association or overall Ukrainian activities? Uh, maybe uh, something about STEM. STEM is uh, science, technology, engineering and math. Why we start from math? Because I believe that uh, logical thinking, critical thinking is the core of not only future but today's professions. That's why we should learn our people, our children, uh how to know more about this stem science technology engineering and math 
and uh, we create special roadmap for st implementing STEM in Ukraine right now and uh, how to involve more girls and women into STEM because it's a problem uh, in whole, uh, globally uh, that less women than men enter to these professions uh, and we try to create special programs for example girls in STEM with role models and mentors uh, uh, famous women from STEM professions uh, uh, to explain girls how to improve their skills in this sphere and uh, and one more about uh, um, about ecosystem of Ukrainian startups. I, uh, I, I told you uh, that I switched from offline business to this online platform. It's a completely different paradigm of thinking, this uh, uh, ecosystem of startups. Uh, and it's very uh, quick uh, and aggressive, uh, maybe scaling uh, and a lot of changes every time and a lot of fails and uh, mistakes and hypotheses and but uh, you should go on you should give up uh, uh, never give up never give up it's my advice to to all uh, founders of startups never give up go to your dream and do what you love very good advices, to be honest. But uh, coming back to this uh, women presence at the IT world, I have a feeling that every year it's uh, growing and growing. So we are on a good path. Yeah, exactly. I, I hope so. <laughs> I believe in so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. I can uh, I can observe it also on the Polish market where I am based. That every year we do have more girls, more women who are present in uh, IT industry, not only in IT, generally in various industries. So so this is changing. Uh, the the old times which were dominated by men probably are going to be forgotten quite soon. But now we have like a balance on the on the market. Uh, Natalia, if anyone wanted to find you or or if you could share with some of the points which are worth to go to find more information in this, where you are at and what you are doing, where would you direct such person? Uh, everyone can find me through LinkedIn. Uh, I have a lot of LinkedIn contacts or through WhatsApp, for example. And I will be happy to know like-minded people and to connect with them. So I will do my best to add the proper links to the description of today's uh, conversation. So it should make it easy to find you and to get in touch with you. But for today, thank you very much, Natalia. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. This broadcast is sponsored by TimeCamp, a company providing time tracking software for shared service centers and IT firms. Find out how much time your company spends on particular projects, clients and business processes. Use the discount code BSS to get 20% off the app's annual subscription.